Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father, through the Son, whose name is Yahushua, and in him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We, under, we, under, understand. we understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be given to uh, what is it? used against you. In the day when I tried to deliver like a white person, that thing just different. I ain't tell it, you know what I'm saying? I tried to deliver that thing like a, like a, like a flight attendant. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's how we should do it, like a flight attendant, because you take a flight attendant seriously. You know what I'm saying? People don't be taking you seriously. I mean, uh, it can okay. and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to all the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we want from them is to repent. That's not how it go. No peace to the wicked. Um, only thing we say to them is repent. The only thing we say to them is repent. That they may live. That they may live. There's Amen. no peace, says my God, to the wicked. For the wicked. All right, where are we starting today? Daniel, what you got? Daniel, what you got on your heart today? Uh, we oh, always ask Daniel. We got, we got, we got Tony. All right, ask again. We got Tony here. Tony, why don't y'all tag team? Let's, we'll hear, let's hear from a Christian perspective. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I wouldn't call you a Christian on camera. You know what I'm saying? He wrong. He just, I knock I'm him out. Just I knock him out. I'm just joking. What do you, what do you, where, where y'all want to start? Not Romans. You always say that. We can start Romans. I only want the book. Don't try to give me a whole, you know what I'm saying? He's going to try to preach the sermon. You know what I'm saying? He's going to try to preach the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't want the whole book. Just, give, just the book. Well, brother, you know. <laughs> Anyone, man? Now you got them all self-conscious, man. He's going to make sure. He's going to pick somebody out of the Old Testament. Watch. I actually, no, I actually was. I was thinking about either. Deuteronomy. No, I was thinking about either, either uh, Kings or Samuel. Uh, oh, you want to go. Pick one. Pick one of those. King Samuel, one of those. We'll do Samuel. <laughs> yeah, the other pick. What would you like, ma'am? Me? Yeah. Um, kings is fine. Okay. okay. So there's two kings. One, which one? Oh, duh. Huh. Um, second is good. Second kings. Second all right. Good. Shanice, we got second kings. I need a number. Five. Okay, it's second kings, chapter five, baby. Huh? Everybody about land that somewhere. It's good. Off of the humble, too. Second kings, chapter five. What verse? Oh, goodness, we just missed something good. That's all right, though. Second Kings, am I right? Second Kings chapter 5? Maybe I might be confusing that. Second Kings chapter 5, give me verse 7. Did we? Yep. Let's do it. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he ripped his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive mm -hmm. that this man does send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Uh-huh. Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeks a quarrel against me. Mm-hmm. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel ripped his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore has you, have you rent your clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Mm. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Then Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall come again unto you. And you he said, Wash where? In the Jordan. All right, and what did we learn about that? Who washed in the Jordan? Who also washed in Jordan? Mm -hmm. Yahushua, Yahushua, right? Jesus, right? When it was time, when it was time to, when it was time to wash and be baptized, who baptized him? Let's grab it. This first, uh, this is the uh, the Gospel of John, um, Gospel of John, chapter one. Give me verse forty-three. The Gospel of John, chapter one, verse forty-three. Let's see what the book say. It's a heart. What do you think I'm about to say to you right now? What? I know. What do you think I'm going to say to you? You 
You got it. Please do that. Yeah. Thank you, son. What else? The day following Yahushua would go forth into Galilee and find Philip and said unto him, Follow me. All right, he found Philip. He said, Follow me. Watch this. Now, Philip was of Beth Beth Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of one whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Yahushua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And how did they know that? How did they know, like, how did they know, like, this was the one? Yahushua, book told us, remember we read a couple weeks ago, Isaiah chapter 53, book told us he had no comely, comeliness, near, right? he wasn't, like, all handsome and pretty and, like, special that people look at him and be like, oh, he the one, right? Book told us, like, he didn't look nothing special. So how did they know just all, like, like, we found Yahushua, he the one? How would they know that? Based off what we read last week. Because when he was baptized, the Messiah, the Messiah, the what happened when he was baptized? Right he spoke out of the, the sky. Dove right? Dove came down. Right? The spirit came down in the form of a dove. And what else happened? The Most High God spoke. The voice of the Most High God said what? This is my son. And who am I? And what? Well pleased. He said, I'm well pleased. When they heard that voice. And they saw the man. So you look at that whole time. What is John preaching before that happened? There's somebody that's coming. He said, look, y'all think I'm the, everybody thought John was the Messiah, right? John was like, no, 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 I'm not the Messiah. He denied it. He's like, no, 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 I'm not the Messiah. There's one that comes after me who's preferred before me, right? Although he comes after me, the man is preferred as if he was before me, right? So he was trying to explain that to people. He gets that across. Right after that, he baptizes the man. A spirit comes down that people can visibly see in the shape of a dove. And then a voice come out and they say, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. After that, remember, John is telling them, this is the Messiah, this is the Messiah, this is the Messiah. Right? The Messiah coming, the Messiah coming. Then they get to see that miracle happen. Of course, they're going to look at him and be like, his name is Yahushua. He's come from Nazareth. He the one. When the man come around, we follow him. Yahushua start walking around like, yo, Philip, follow me. You think Philip was just sitting there like, okay, let me go follow this random guy. No. He like, oh no, I heard about you. You the one. So he jumped on and he started following. Let's keep hearing. What's we'll happen? And Nathaniel said unto him, Can there anything good come out of Nazareth? Right, Nathaniel was looking at it like, the boy from Nazareth, Nazareth, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like uh, you know what I'm saying? It's like uh what is it like? It's like the West Side. So you know what I'm saying, you from summer. You from you from Darn. You from Darn Seven Hill. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody talking to you about the West Side. And you looking like, can anything good come from the West Side? You know what I'm talking about? That's how they looking at it. Like, can anything good come from Nazareth? That don't even make sense. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And Philip said unto him, come and see. He said, look, just follow me. He had people that advocate for him because they saw this miracle. Or they heard about it. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And Yahshua saw Nathaniel coming to him and said of, said of him, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no God. Mm -hmm. And Nathaniel said unto him, from where do you know me? Uh huh. And Yahshua answered and said unto him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Now pay attention to what just happened, right? Nathaniel obviously didn't necessarily believe. When they told Nathaniel, like, yo, come on, let's follow the home. Right? Nathaniel was looking back like, can anything good come out of Nazareth? That don't make no sense. The man from Nazareth? They cause they told him like, Yahushua from where? Nazareth. So as soon as he heard that, he like. Ain't no prophet supposed to be coming out of Nazareth, right? He's looking like, that don't make no sense. I, don't, I, I can't think of one prophecy that's going to bring the Messiah out of Nazareth. Where the Messiah supposed to come from? Uh, Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Out of Judah, right? Out of Bethlehem. So we looking at it like, he looking at, he just thinking about prophecy. He looking like, Nazareth? Nah, ain't nothing good coming out of Nazareth. So he didn't believe. Then watch what the Most High God do after that. He sent his son to do what? What? And Yahshua answered and said to him, before that Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Right? He said his name. He was like, hey man, how you know my name? Right? He was like, oh, because you know, before Philip came and called you, I saw you under a fig tree. Yeah, like, what? Watch, keep going, watch this. And Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Yahshua answered and said unto him, because I said unto you, I saw you under the fig tree, you believe? You shall see greater things than these. That's all it took. He had to give them something. You have to understand, like, what's happening right here is not like a regular thing. It's not magic happening. It's nothing like that. These people were believing based off of evidence, right? You hear a group of people that happen to be in the presence 
who who was out there when uh or who was out there going to go see John? Everybody. The book said everybody went to go see John. So whoever happened to be out there at the time that y'all was not saying everybody was there at the same time, but at, you know what I'm saying everybody took their trip to go see John because John was the man. Everybody thought he was the Messiah. He told them, no, I'm not the Messiah. Right? So whoever happened to be there at the time that Yahushua got baptized, they saw the man and they heard a voice come out that say, you are my son. Like, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. That's why the man come back when he talked to Nathaniel and he tell him, Nathaniel, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathaniel, no, I was under that fig tree by myself. Didn't nobody know I was under that fig tree. It no tell him what he was doing under the fig tree. Right? Like, we don't know how, like, how significant that moment. All we know is he might have been hiding out under the fig tree, doing something he wasn't supposed to do under the fig Who knows? He was under the fig tree chilling, and he felt like nobody knew that. That's how I like to imagine it. Nobody knew I was there. All y'all should have to say is, no, nah, I saw you under the fig tree. And watch his response. Watch what Nathaniel say after that. And Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Why would he call him the son of God? Right, just right. You tell me, I don't know you from anybody, right? You tell me I'm under a fig tree. That's amazing that you know that. I'll give you that. Why would my response be that you are the son of God? Why would he say that? Because of the law and the prophets. And he had John. Only because he heard from other people that a voice came down and said, you are my son in whom I am well pleased. You have to understand, like, this is what's going around town right now. So he's admitting, like, all right, I'm rocking with it. Right? When Peter, you remember when Peter said he is the son of God, he said, who do men, y'all should ask, who do men say I am? Who do they say I am? Some people was like, oh, some people say you're Elijah. Some people say you're the prophet. This and all that, right? Then he asked Peter, and Peter said he was what? He's the son of God. He said, you're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. Y'all should have told him what after that? And in flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my father did. The voice came out of the sky, right? It's important for us to see these things and not look at it like it's just some type of magic and that you're just supposed to just drift into believing. Like, oh, I just have to believe just because I told myself to believe. That's not how the book works. The man always works off of evidence, even if that evidence is secondhand. Nathaniel got secondhand evidence. He wasn't there. He didn't believe it at first, right? People he trusts believed it. They're like, come on, follow us. He's like, man, ain't nothing good coming from uh, now. Is that crazy? So y'all, she'll have to come up and show him something. Like, no, nah, I want you. So let me show you a little something. Let me explain something to you. You was under that fig tree. Okay, now you the son of God. You must be the real one. Because ain't nobody know I was under that darn fig tree. All right? Let's go to, uh, let's grab Exodus. Let's talk, talk a little bit. So we celebrating Passover today. And Passover deals, um, Prophetically with Yahweh Shua himself. Right? When we look at when we look at how, how things played out, Yahweh Shua came, he died on the cross. That would be on the day of Passover, the night of Passover. Um, and then that started the week of unleavened bread. And then during the midst of it, he rose. You know how these people celebrate, you know, Easter Sunday or some of them. I mean, if you if you're a real Christian. Because I ain't talking about that. I ain't talking about the Catholic Christian. You know, the Protestant Christian don't call them, consider no Catholic Christian a real Christian, right? If you're a real Christian, it's not Easter Sunday. What is the name? Resurrection Sunday. Oh, God. <laughs> Resurrection Sunday. You know what I'm talking about? Because you don't want to take Christ out of the day now. You know what I'm talking about? It's about the man. You know what I'm saying? So it's Resurrection Sunday. And it's good that, you know, that they recognize the resurrection. The resurrection is what our hope is. Grab uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. You ain't got that. Listen, if you ain't open in the resurrection, that thing don't even make sense. You ain't even, you know what I'm saying? You ain't even started running yet. You know what I'm talking about? Book said we got to run. You ain't even start running you don't believe in the resurrection. So it's good. You know what I'm saying? It's good. It's, you know what I'm saying? You getting there. You know what I'm saying? You, you looking at it, you looking at it, you celebrating resurrection Sunday. It's like, no, oh, poor little tink tink. Look at it. You know what I'm saying? You getting there. You moving. You getting closer. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to, I don't want to talk. They making progress. You got to give them credit where the credit is due, Taryn. Goodness gracious. I be trying to give them credit. You know, so you're making a little bit of progress. You, you celebrating resurrection. This is 1 John, this chapter one, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. Mm -hmm. 
Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. That got that. Right? You have to have that hope that when we see him, right, we're going to be like him. But what is he like? Son of God. The man resurrected. Right? The man came up with a new body. When he was walking around, did they, did they know who he was? This is a man that they were just hanging out with for at least a year. Right? The man died, came back. Did they know who he was? He was walking right next to him. They didn't even know who he was. So during the time when the book explains Son of God, it's always talking about a supernatural being, right? Mm -hmm. So in Genesis, when it say the sons of God laid with the women and created giants, it's talking about supernatural beings directly created from God. Um, in Matthew, we called Adam the son of God because he was directly made from God. And then Yahushua, it said, he was the last Adam. He was directly made from God. And we know that Yahushua was made, God had put his, his essence, his spirit into a woman. You know what I'm saying? So it was like no man corrupted that, you know, that body, right? So when Yahushua died and come back, he had a different body. Same thing with us. When people say, I'm a child of God, they use it loosely, not understanding that. The book is talking about a supernatural being. So he said, now we have the right to become sons of God because Yahushua died and was resurrected with a new body. And if we are within what we need to be doing as far as the commandments goes, when we die, we'll become sons of God too. He said, we don't know what we're going to be, but we're going to be like him whenever it happens. So that's what we look at. That's the hope that, res that, that's the hope that saves us. right? That's the hope that motivates the behavior that will be approved by the Most High God. Any other hope won't properly motivate the behavior. So that's like, that's the first thing. So if a Christian is saying Resurrection Sunday, well, you getting closer, right? But what's the actual day? Passover. Mm -hmm. No, it's not Passover, right? Passover is when he died. Uh, first fruit. First fruit, yeah. sheep waving is when he resurrected, right? Let's grab uh, Leviticus chapter 23. You like one of the bad kids in church. I'm sorry. Yeah, you yeah. know. Trying to chew on the tip grill low. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that's making it worse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You might well just chew it. That's what my mama used to tell me. Just chew it. Don't put no more in your darn mouth. <laughs> my mama whooped my butt in church. <laughs> that thing is crazy. Be sitting there, pastor just preaching it. We go, pow! <laughs> and you know not to really cry. Pow! <laughs> <laughs> my mom's my mom hit me a couple of times in church. She don't want it because it, it, at any moment she'll take him to the bathroom. <laughs> at any moment. Mom, you take us to the kitchen. Mom, you take me to the bathroom. I got a whooping in the bathroom. And if you get a whooping in that bathroom, the worst part is you got friends at the church. Yep. And it's only one person coming out of that bathroom with you. And you, they just heard somebody cry. You know what I'm saying? So you just, now you got to sit there with the. That wasn't me crying, baby. <laughs> no one did when you crying. Definitely got a whooping in the bathroom. Oh, man. Pulled my pants down and everything. It was a little girl I liked at the church we went to. I used to, I used to go to church one body in Christ Christian church. You know what I'm saying? Pastor Don Darn Burst. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? It was a girl, a little, little girl. I ain't going to say her name. She might watch. You know what I'm saying? It was a little girl I used to like back then. You know what I'm saying? I go in there, get my darn whooping. Whole time I'm like, man, I hope she don't know. <laughs> I knew she knew too. You know what I'm talking about? Dang, man, that's a cold game out here. You, ain't a, you, ain't, you don't come of age until you got a whooping in the church bathroom. Hey, no, you know what I'm saying? That's bad. That's bad. You got to get a whooping in the church. What we got? We got Leviticus chapter 23. What I want? Let me see Leviticus chapter 23. What I want? Verse 4? Uh, or a little bit lower. Five. All right, Leviticus chapter 23. Give me verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Mm -hmm. And on the 15th day of the same month. Oh, hold on, hold on. Now, give me verse 4. All right. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Right? He said, these are the feasts of the Lord. Uh, the feast, when they say feast, it's saying appointed times, right? So these are the appointed times of the Lord. Even holy convocations. What's a holy convocation? Holy, what does that mean? Uh, set apart. Set apart, right? Yeah. Set apart. So when you think of set apart, it's like, Okay, you go here, but you go here, right? I have to make a difference between these two. The Most High God calls us for that difference. So, of course, when people see, like, okay, all right, I'm a part of this group. I pull you out of this group. How this group going to see this one? 
I got a bunch of kids, right? Bunch of kids. Azariah, right there with all the kids. I take only Azariah. I say, no, Azariah, you stand over here. How everybody looking at me in Azariah now? Like why you why, why you can't you know what I'm saying why she can't be around them? You got a problem with our kids? You know what I'm saying? Like why she why she can't you know what I mean? Why she can't you know what I'm saying? What's what's going on? What's the deal? That's how people go. That's how they supposed to look at us, right? We supposed to separate ourselves to make a difference. Be like no, not not me. Why you can't you know what I'm saying? Nah, that's just not what I'm doing. You want a Bible? Huh? Are you good? No, I'm not. You good? Mm -hmm. Sorry. I don't know. You good? Um, what was that? <laughs> that threw me off. Set apart. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying. So we set apart. We look at it, and we got to make a difference. It's important for us to make a difference because when people look, people are supposed to be a, what we all do. Even us, right? All of us have observed the world, and when 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 we observe in the world, we like, okay, what's the best way to go, right? Okay, what career should I take? How long should I stay in school? Should I continue school after high school? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I get into this? So, oh, I like hobbies. Which hobby should I take on, right? What should I do? What should I do with my life? That's what we're doing, figuring out the whole time. We're observing everything, trying to figure out our life. The Most High God, through that process, uses us who obey him to make a difference from the people who don't. So they can look and observe and be like, those people are doing a lot of wild things that seem like a lot of fun. However, this group over here has these qualities that we like. So even if a person chooses to go down this other path, right? When they bump their head, when they get into this and be like, I don't like this, I'm depressed, I don't feel it, I'm into drugs now, I'm doing this or whatever, and they're doing whatever, they can look back and be like, oh, that other crew, they still exactly where they were when I started. And they still just as happy or not happy or whatever it is that they're going through, they're consistently in that same spot. We have to serve just like a lighthouse, right? Somebody get lost at sea, you got a lighthouse, and it's always going to be in the same spot. Right? It's not moving around. The rest of the world moving. People inconsistent. They, they don't have nothing to stand on. One week I feel like God told me this. The next week I feel like God told me that. Matter of fact, however it play out, God told me he did it was going to play out that way. But only after it played out that way. However that worked. Right? Ain't that there? They be like, well, you know, God told me that I should have took that job. Then they get fired from the job. You know what? God told me that wasn't my job. <laughs> ain't, that, ain't that it? Because you look at it, they ain't got nothing solid to stand on. They just change the rules however they get it. Right? And it's not just the Christian people that do it. It's everybody. Oh, my gut told me this. Oh, I did. Well, you know. The universe says. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just have a personal connection with the universe. What does that mean? Right? All it means is you're determining what's right and wrong. Which is fine, but just own it. Walk into it. You know, I determine what's right and wrong for my life. Like, own it. So you can go to hell. At least you know why you're going to hell. You know what I'm talking about? I don't want nobody going to hell. They don't know why they there. You know what I'm saying? Don't be wasting my guy time talking about, you know, why I get here. No, I told him already. God, don't even answer him. You know what I'm saying? Don't even answer him. That they don't make no sense. So we look at, we have to set apart. We have to set apart. So this is what the holy convocation is. First part, set apart. Convocation, what's up? Gathering. Gathering. That means it's multiple of us. Right? So first we're set apart and then we're in a group. Right? So this is the time. All these days that we're, well, we're not going to go through all, all of them, but um, the days that we're about to go through, these are times that we pull ourselves from the world together, right? That's what this is for. We separate ourselves from the world together. That's why you'll never see any of these events where I'm just saying, hey, anybody who wants to come, come on. That's not what this is for, right? We can do something else, you know what I'm saying, whatever. Anybody's invited, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? I don't even like anybody like that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, if we ever was in the mood we just like, okay, anybody game come. Night. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Game night. You know what I'm saying? You have a game night, anybody come. I don't care. I'll put it on Facebook. Whoever want to come, come. I'm not doing that for, for the Passover. That don't make no sense. I used to, right? I used to, but I'm like, oh, that's not what the book's saying. Set apart convocation. That means that's a congregation of holy people, right? And that's what we're here for, right? I want the people that's looking for God. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for the people that's looking for him. And we set ourselves apart and then we learn about his days. We learn about the things that he gave us. We learn about his word. We learn about, most importantly, his character. That's the best thing you can do for yourself is just really understand God's character. Because once you do that, people can't lie to you about him. Right? You know it's like, mm, that's not him. Sorry. Oh, God loves everybody. Sounds great. I really love it. But no. 
God, I know, whoop a little butt. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to just logically, I mean, he's going to send people to hell. Would you do that to somebody you love? Send them somewhere where you ain't no coming back from that. And they're going to suffer for the, rest of, for the rest of eternity. Would you have the capacity to do that for somebody you love? For me? Yeah, you personally. I mean, you love somebody. Who, who do you love most? Your mom? Yeah. Okay, so like, would you, could you imagine the situation, could you imagine anything that she could do <laughs> that you would put her in permanent torment for all of eternity? Of course, my good friend Baxter here. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it. You would never do nothing like that to somebody you love. It just don't even make sense. Matter of fact, if a person, if you just, I mean, if we just met somebody right now and they say, oh, I love my wife so much, but I'm going to kill her. Right, I mean, you said, no, I'm good. This ain't got nothing to do with you, baby. But I'm gonna kill her. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to murder her tonight. But I want you guys to know, I absolutely, take it if somebody was cheating, right? If somebody was cheating and they asked him, yeah, I cheat on her, but I still love her, how are we gonna look at him? Like, no, you don't. It ain't one girl on Facebook or Instagram that's gonna look at him and be like, I get what you're saying. That's never gonna happen. So that's how, why, why we, we have to logically look at God's character. Okay, you gonna send anybody to hell that's not approved by you. However, they trying to tell me that you love everybody does not compute. And if it does that. compute, then it's gonna be just like the cheating guy that say that he loved his wife or love his girlfriend. That's why a lot of people, when they say they don't mess with the Bible or mess with God or believe God or why God allows this if he loves everybody. Because they got logic. Yeah, it's like Somebody that told them oh, he loved everybody, but he shouldn't be, they look at it like this. your God is inconsistent. Like it's easier to talk to an atheist than somebody with that type of thought. Yeah. Because if you believe, if you believe God love everybody and you believe that he gonna send certain people to hell, right? Those are two opposing thoughts, two thoughts that don't make sense. So if you've accepted that in your mind, like, oh, it doesn't have to make sense to me, right? Then nobody can convince you of anything, cause like I can I can tell you a whole bunch of stuff that makes sense, but that's not a requirement for you. Requirement for you is something else, right? It has to feel good for you. It has to be easy. It has to agree with what your mom and your dad taught you. Like all that, that those might be your requirements. If your requirements are for something to make sense, being told that will make you an atheist, right? You'll be like, that doesn't make sense. I'm done. Like your God is inconsistent. I'd rather go with something else. Now they go to the other stuff that don't make sense, right? A lot of people, no matter what, if you don't believe God, whatever you believe don't make sense. So it don't matter. But it's something that's a little easier for them to bite off of, right? When we go into it, we want to be able to make sense. We want to, we want to. Okay, this is God character. This is consistent. This is what we see consistently through the book. When somebody tells us something that ain't true, okay, it ain't true. Verse five. In the fourteenth day of the first month, that even is the Lord's Passover. First month is what? Abib. Right, so we had a month of Abib. The meaning of Abib means to, or means uh, what? From the beginning, start. It's like, uh, it's like uh, it's similar to the concept of spring, right? When we think of spring, when we think of spring, what do we think of? New beginning, like growth. Like new growth, you know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, the actual word Abib is like green. It's like uh, green growing, you know what I'm saying? So it's like the new plants growing pretty much, like we think of with spring. All right, so that's Abib. That's why it happens in what we call a springtime. As Hebrews, we didn't have a springtime or autumn or fall or anything. We just had summer and winter. You know what I'm saying? That's how we look at it. But we still acknowledge the, the events that happen in between, right? So um, in the 14th day of Abib, what do we do? The first month is the Lord's Passover. And mm -hmm. on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. Unto the Lord, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. and the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days, and the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. All right? So, you have Passover. You look at it, that's the first, that starts it all off, the day of Passover. At not even. The, at even, right? So, you have the 14th day, but at even is what? Uh, the next day. It's sunset. Right. Right? And that sunset is what transferred one day to the next day. So, for us, it's midnight, right? When we kind of look at it now. Here, you, the next day transfers at midnight. But for our, our, our ancestors, it transferred it at sunset. Yeah. Like, like imagine trying to figure out, you ain't got no watch or nothing, you know what I'm saying? Your iPhone ain't gonna tell you, you're trying to figure out what midnight is. You know what I'm saying? That's impossible. So they had to look at something that you could look at. Everybody could agree, this is happening right now. Midnight, you can't, you know what I'm saying? Without, without an iPhone, how you gonna know? You know what I'm saying? So they're looking at it, sunset transferred to that. So, so technically, it, when the sun goes down today, to us back then, that would be Sunday. So like 7 p.m. tonight would be Sunday for us. Like the next day. 
So in Genesis, it said there was evening and morning the next day. So in the book, when they say at even, that's technically the next day. So when you say the 14th day at even, it's kind of like the 15th. It's the beginning of the 15th. It's the end of the 14th and the beginning of the 15th, right? So that's when we would kill our lambs, all right? Slaughter our lambs. It's nighttime. Lamb gets slaughtered. We all eat that night. We go to sleep. The next day is the 15th day, right? 15th day begins unleavened bread. That's a seven-day um, festival, right? So we, for seven days, um, we eat unleavened bread, and we don't have any leavened bread. So leavened bread, leavened bread would be like, you know, a loaf of bread, like anything that rises, right? So we get any, any type of bread that rises, we get it out of there, get it out of our house. So we just got done. We was late. We just threw ours away this morning. Um, I still had a half a thing, half a loaf left. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I have too big old loaf. Uh, but you throw all the leaven away, all the leaven bread away, and then you eat unleavened bread or whatever else throughout that week, but you do not eat any leavened bread, any regular risen bread. So you do that seven days. The first day, right, that 15th day. That's then we got a burger too. Yeah, be ashamed of yourself. Every year, bro. Yeah, be ashamed of yourself. But the first day is a Sabbath, right? So that means you don't do any work. And then the last day, the seventh day, is a Sabbath where you don't do any work. You know what I'm saying? So you do those, everything in between, regular days or whatever, you just don't eat leavened bread. In the New Testament, they called it a high Sabbath. Yeah, high Sabbath. Uh, it's a special, is, like a it, special it, Sabbath. It's not the normal Sabbath at the end of the week. This is like because of Passover or Day of Atonement or something like that. Now watch this. But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days, and the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give you, you shall reap the harvest. Then... You shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. All right. So he said, when you come into the land, you shall reap the harvest. So when it says reap the harvest, that's saying you're growing something in your land. You're taking it and you're pulling it out of the field. Right. So there's something that harvested, something grew in your land. This is springtime. So plants are starting to grow. Same thing with our crops. So we take our crops, we reap them, we pull them out. Right. And we bring them into God. So throughout the year, anybody who, you know, know anything about farming or anything like that, throughout the year, you have different harvests, right? So you might have a springtime harvest, a summertime harvest, and a fall harvest. Usually nothing in the winter, right? Um, and so you have those, those three times a year where you have big stuff, you know, growing up. So this would be the first one of our year, all right? So we have our springtime harvest. We bring it up. This is called the first fruit because this is the first harvest that we're getting fruit from. We call it all of our plants fruit, right? So this is, the, this is the first time we're getting fruit. We would take that, we bundle it up, whatever our idea, we take a sample of it, right? Clean out my whole field, not reap the edges, leave some for the poor. And then I come, take mine, take one sample of it, and then I would do what's called a wave offering to God. So you wave it to God, you know what I'm saying? You had a heave offering where you take it upside down, and you had a wave offering. The wave offering was a type of offering that we would give it and let the priest have it, right? So we would do a wave offering to our most high God, and it represented us saying, hey, we got a whole lot more harvest, harvesting to do for the rest of this year. This is just the first bunch of it. Um, would you mind giving us more like this, right? Give us more harvest like this. So it's a, it's a way of faith to saying to God, hey, thank you for this. I'm going to donate this to you. I'm going to give this to your priest. And also, can you give me more? I'm doing that in faith that you'll give me more like this, right? It's important to understand what that day means because it has implications later. All these things have implications later. Keep going. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. Uh -huh. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And you shall offer that day when you wave the sheaf a he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of a hen. Now watch this. Grab a... Uh, uh... Exodus chapter 11. Let's try to figure out where this stuff comes from. It's Exodus chapter 11. Give me verse 4. And Moses said, thus says the Lord. It's Exodus chapter 11 verse 4. About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, 
and the first and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. Mm -hmm. The firstborn of the Pharaoh that sits upon his throne, even to the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. This is why Passover was birth. This is why this is why it's called Passover. Because the most high God went out, he said, I'm gonna kill all the firstborn of the land in Egypt. At the time we were captives in Egypt, our ancestors, right? So we were captives in Egypt. We were trying to get out of there. Most High God was sending tons of plagues on the people, uh, and as they were having those plagues on them, they uh, their their ruler, the Pharaoh, he was like declining to let us go. So we say, "Hey, look, let us go." No, okay, let us go. No, plagues happen each time he says no. So this is the last plague. Most High God said, "Oh no, he gonna let you go after this one." I'm gonna go over all the land and I'm gonna kill all the firstborn children. So in other words, your oldest son, right? Your oldest son that you have gone, right? That breaks their heart, breaks all of them, right? Daughter wasn't considered firstborn. They were considered firstborn, but he specifically wanted the firstborn. Right. Mm. So, you know, the girls, you know what I'm saying? They got lucky. But there's a reason for that, right? Because if we go back to Exodus, what were they doing to our sons? They were killing them. They were killing our sons, remember? Mm. Like when we were captive, we started, we started growing too much, and they're looking like, oh, no, they got too many kids, right? They said, you know what we got to do? We're going to kill them, right? Each male child that comes out and kills. So that's why the Most High God said, okay, you want to take it there? I didn't want to get this far. I'd give you plenty of chance to let my people go. All right, right? I got something for you. So he took all of their firstborn. That broke everybody's heart. So everybody is in there mourning. And at that time, Most High God, he knew that. So he said, when that happens, y'all but got to get get loose. Watch what he tell. Uh, grab, uh, grab Exodus 12 for me. Exodus chapter 12, give me verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Now, on the tenth day of the month, he told us that we should take the lamb. That's when the lamb is chosen, right? Let's start looking at how this plays out with Yahweh Shua, right? It's important because all of these things, every day that the Most High God gave us and commanded us to keep, they're prophetic. So remember, this was given to our people 4,000 plus years ago, right? We were told, hey, keep the day of Passover, keep the week of unleavened bread, keep the day of uh, the first fruit sheep waving. At the time, all we think it's about is we left Egypt, he took all their firstborns, he spared our firstborns. Great, sounds great, right? But as we go through this and read it, I'm going to show you guys how it was much more than that. Uh, let's go to uh, Matthew. Yeah, Matthew 16. Let's try it. I probably got it written down somewhere over here. Um, no, I don't. I get oh, Luke 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 1. So remember, on the 10th day, Right? On the 10th day of Abib, that's when we choose the lamb. All right? This is Luke 12. And another thing you have to pay attention to is watch how this stuff is hidden in the book. Like, it's not obvious. There's no Bible verse that you can go to. What are we about to look at? There's no Bible verse that we, we can go to that just break all this down easily. Just like, oh, yeah, see, and Yahushua on the 10th day was chosen as a lamb. This is why he represents. It doesn't, it doesn't do that. The, the Bible is presented in a way purposely. We talked about this the last few weeks. It's purposely given to us in a way that we won't understand it. Right? The Most High God intentionally like, writes everything and mixes it up in a way that when we look at it, we're going to be like, what is, what is this saying to me? Right? It's purposely that way. It's important for us to know that and set that expectation for ourselves so that we don't get discouraged. We don't want to look at the book and be like, oh, I just don't get it. Maybe God just doesn't want me to get it. That's how some people are going to look at it. Like, oh, or God must not be real because if he is real, I've been praying every night to help me understand the Bible and I still don't understand it. So he must not be real because he's not answering that prayer. All the type of the type of thinking that we got ourselves caught up into. But once you set the expectation that, hold on, hold, hold we got right there before we go there. Go to Isaiah chapter uh, 28 verse 9 real quick. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9. Because it's just important that we all know this is here. Keep this in memory that this is here. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? 
Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. Right? So doctrine is teaching. So who is he going to make to understand his teaching? Is it going to be those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts? In other words, little kids, right? Little toddlers that are just old enough to stop breastfeeding. Right? Is it going to be little kids, little babies? No. Right? He said no. Watch this. For precept must be upon precept. He said you have to take this precept and put it on top of this precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. You got to take this line and put it on top of this line. What else? Line upon line, here a little and there a little. You got to take a little bit from here and a little bit from there. He's describing a puzzle. He's describing something that you have to put together, that you have to make, make, it, make, it, make it make sense. Right? You're not supposed to just walk into this and get it as a baby. He calls us all babies when we first come into the book. So if we come to the book, we just, you know what I'm saying, we first come into, oh, okay, I want to believe in you, baby. You're not supposed to just walk into this and get it. If you do, that's great. That means you're special or something different. But that's not the expectation that he's setting. The expectation that he sets for us is, who's going who to get this knowledge? Who's who going to get this teaching? Who's going to be made to understand this teaching? He actually goes to the wean from the breast and drawn from the milk. No, precept got to be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips, for with stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to this people. He said, for with stammering lips in another tongue will I speak to this people. What does that mean? That means that he's speaking to us with a stutter. Imagine somebody coming up to you trying to explain like some intricate directions to you. So you click, 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 click right there, there, there and just stutter in there. You'd be like, what? Hold on, start. Hold on. What are you trying to say? That's how the man saying he speaks to us with stammering lips, lips and what? Another tongue. That's somebody trying to, you don't speak no, a lick of Spanish, a lick of German. He come up to you speaking German. I don't think that's... No? Not German? I thought that was German. That's not German? No, that's more like a, a fake Hebrew. Then he mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not like a Lebanese or something like that. You know? That's how I imagine. That's how I like to imagine. You know what I'm saying? But you look at it. That's like, that's like you don't know a lick of whatever language I was just talking. And a man speak to you in that language, you're looking like, what are you, what are you saying? Now imagine somebody walking up to you speaking another language, and they just like, like passionate about what they say. You know what I'm saying? They like trying to get your attention. That thing will freak you out. You'll be looking at it like, hold on, what you trying to, okay. All right, then you plan charades with them. That's how the book is. Because the book is presented to us. We all know it's serious. We looking at it, and we like, Okay, but well, now we freaking out. It's like, okay, I don't get it, though. I don't know what you're saying. Watch what the book said. Keep going. For with the stammering lip in another tongue will he speak to this people. Uh-huh. To whom he said, this is the rest. So to anybody he said, this is the rest. That you may cause the weary to rest. That you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. And this is the refreshing. So to anybody who looks at this book and say, this is how I get my rest. This is how I make it to kingdom. This is how I make it to heaven. This is how I get saved. Anybody who looked at the Bible that way. That's who he's speaking to in a different language and with stammering lips. Anybody who wants salvation from the book is getting spoken to in a different language and in stammering lips. Nobody gets a pass. Everybody got to go through the same thing. It's not meant for us to just get right away. It's meant for it to be difficult. It's meant for it to be confusing. It's meant for us to look and say, what does God want from me? What does he want from my life? What am I supposed to do? What is he saying to me? Right? Whatever. Uh, it took about three years. It takes time. And for somebody else, it might take a little longer. But whatever the case is, there's a few things that we know that we can understand. Yeah. You're not going to understand like just the whole, but that just don't make no sense. Right? If you do, you're special. Most high God bless you. That's a beautiful thing. Right? But that's not how, that's not how it's presented. In reality, what's going to happen is you're going to understand what you can do and what you can't do. That part is simple. Right? He put that out. Everybody can get that. But getting past that is difficult. It's not, it's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be just this easy thing to get. Right? Keep going, watch this. So with a stammering lips and another tongue will I speak to this people to, to whom he said, said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. But they what? Yet they would not hear. But they wouldn't hear. Right? It happened and the people wouldn't hear. I spoke to you in stammering lips. I spoke to you in a different language. I told you that this is the rest and this is the refreshing. Your butt wouldn't hear. That means we stop listening. I don't get it. This don't make sense to me. And then we give up. Right? And the, for the people that do that, this is the reason. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, pre precept upon precept, 
Line up on line, line up on line here a little and there a little. Look, hold on. So the word on the Lord of the people that wouldn't hear, it remained a puzzle for them. It remained something that they didn't understand. It remained something that they had to had to put together. And the reason is, he's going to tell you exactly what the reason they is. They might go and fall backwards. For the purpose that they will go and fall backwards. And be broken. And, and be broken. And be snared. And be taken. What is a snare? Trap. The whole thing is a trap. When you approach the Bible that way, when you approach the Bible like, oh, this whole thing is a setup. It's different. It gives you a different expectation. You can look at things a little differently. When you approach it like the mass majority of people, the most I got is laying a trap. I'm going to make this intro part difficult. Let's see who makes it pass. If you don't make it pass, you fell into my trap. You're going to be broken and snared and taken. Right? In other words, you're going to hell. Right? So if you if you don't if you don't get past this part, that's just weeding people out, right? It just lets me know you wasn't the one. But for those who stick with it, line upon line, precept, trying to figure out this puzzle. They have baby, they can't figure it out now, but they take time, they grow with it, then all of a sudden they like, oh, this piece goes here. Right? I can't give, I can't give Esri no puzzle. She is gonna put a piece in her mouth. Right? I can't give Zakai no puzzle. He's gonna poop and darn spit on it. Zahar might be able to put a couple pieces together. TJ gonna be able to put a little bit more together. Right? But then you get to our age and we looking like 5,000 piece puzzle. What you talking about? You know, I'm trying to do that in a couple hours in quarantine. What you mean? You know what I'm saying? We're doing, we put it together. That's what we have to do. It takes time. We look at it, we study, we get familiar, we figure it out, and then this starts to click. And then people start asking, but how do you know the Bible makes sense? How do you know your interpretation of the Bible is really what it is? And then you just look back and look at them like they stupid and just say, because I read it. Like, what you mean? Like, the only reason people ask that question because they haven't read it. They haven't looked at it. They don't know what's in there. They're making an assumption that all these other pastors and all these other people did read it. And they haven't. A lot of these pastors ain't read this book. They don't pay attention to this darn book. They just be running their darn mouth. And the ones that have read it, they read it in concert with being taught what it means from somebody who don't know what they're talking about. So they teach you to look at John 3.16 and this is what John 3.16 means. Right? We have to wash ourselves in this bad thinking. We get into it, we read it ourselves, make ourselves familiar. We start putting it together. We get us a teacher. When somebody teaches the book, and then we walk in it. That's the, 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 the that's success. That's that's how we get there. Right? It's the only way to get there. All right? All right, so now let's go back. Where are we at? Uh, Exodus chapter 12. We read Exodus. Okay, so we were probably on what? Jesus Luke? The lamb on the 10th day. So we had Luke chapter 12. Because we were talking about Luke that don't nobody break all this stuff down. You can't look in the book. You can't go to a place in the Bible that breaks this down for you. Right? This is the stuff that's like precept upon precept, line upon line. It takes somebody who's skilled with the word that'd be able to put it together and be like, okay, package it, here you go. You just try to read the book for yourself, you ain't gonna get that the first time. You ain't gonna get it the second time. You ain't gonna get it the third time unless you're special and the most high God do it for you. Right? But after a while, it clicked. You start putting it together and be like, good. Right? I appreciate the man of God, the woman of God that can look at the book, start reading it one time, and it just all clicked for him. You know what I'm saying? That's good. Just saying, that ain't the expectations. You know, that thing take years. Remember, we wouldn't even, you know what I'm saying? We wouldn't even, we wouldn't even fool around with it at first. We just sitting there, we like, nah, we ain't teaching nothing. I'll tell you what I think about it. You tell me what you think about it, and that's about it. It took years, a couple years before we looked at it. We were confident enough to be like, oh, no, we understand what that's saying. You know what I'm saying? Nah, we know what the books say, and then we just start teaching after that. That took years. But no, overnight thing. But it takes that type of fear. Like, you got to fear God. You can't be one of these people that just look at the book, understand one, one little verse, and just be like, oh, you know what? I can be a preacher. That's crazy. That's dangerous. You messing around with people's souls. You know what I'm saying? It's like a doctor just popping up and like, oh, I know exactly what to do with the coronavirus. I ain't got no credentials. All he did, he gave somebody some darn Tylenol, and their fever went down. You know what I'm saying? He said, oh, I know how to heal the coronavirus. That's crazy. Ain't nobody going to listen to you. But that's what, that's what people are listening to right now. A whole bunch of old people. All right, whole bunch of old people, or they go, they go, they go, they go to a seminary that teach them just absolute dog seminary crap. Mess them up, man. Just teach them dog crap. They teach them how to run a church. Teach them how to collect tithes. All right, they teach them that you know what? A lot of people like to have music first. That just get the people going. Then you collect tithes right afterward, and then you preach your summer sermon. Then after that, if you want, collect tithes again. That's what seminaries teach. 
right? According to their own denomination. How are you teaching according to denomination the books they don't have a denomination? Then you have a nerve to look at me and say, how do you know what you believe in the Bible is right? You know what? You must not read because you still in the denomination. Book tell you flat out don't have it. You still in it. I know you ain't ready. That's crazy. Right? Let's look at it. It's uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 1. In the meantime, pay attention to the numbers. In the meantime, when there were gathered together in an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they could trod upon one another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, mm -hmm. nothing hid that shall not be known. Mm -hmm. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. Mm -hmm. And that which you have spoken in the ear of in closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Mm -hmm. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. Mm -hmm. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he has killed has the power to cast into hell. Mm -hmm. They I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Mm -hmm. But even this, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore... You are more value than many sparrows. Mm -hmm. Also, I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denies me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son That's of Luke Man. That's Luke 12? Yes, man. That's not what I'm looking for. You looking for? Keep going, though. It's still good. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you into the synagogues and magistrates and powers, take you no thought of how or what thing you shall answer or what you shall say, for the Holy Ghost will teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. Uh, I think you're looking for Matthew 16. Matthew 16? That's what I think. Let's try it out. Try Matthew 21. I don't feel like it's Matthew. That seems too late. Yeah, I don't feel like it's Matthew. But let's try it. Matthew chapter 21. Give me verse 1. Yeah, it's 21. It's Matthew chapter 21, verse 1. And when they drew near unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sat Yahshua... Yahshua's two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you will find a donkey tied and a coat with him. Scan, scan down, tell me if it's giving you numbers. I want to say it's Luke, bro. No, this is it. But is it giving you, is it counting off days? Like three days before this. And um, That might be Luke. So grab to grab uh, maybe verse uh, seven or something like that, and should should be talking about Hosanna. Brought the donkey and the very multitude spread their garments of the way and cut down branches. Where are they saying Hosanna? Uh, nine. And the multitudes that went before. All right. Do it give you a cross reference there? No. It don't give you no cross reference verses. Let's see. At the end of it, tell me which one is Luke. We can do Luke seven sixteen. Let's try that. All right. It's Luke seven, but give me verse like. One. Luke seven. Well, that's what they gave me. But, you know, there wasn't no other Luke's on there. You know, it was a couple verses. Down. I don't think that thing right either. Good no, gracious. Not it. Why did you get this one? I don't know. My brain failed me though. Uh, cheap. Let's see. All right, Luke 19. Goodness gracious. Uh, there we go. Shanice, it's your darn fault. Back when you came every week, I was sharp. I used to be like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's my bad, bro. It is your bad. Uh, give me verse 1. Luke chapter 19, give me verse 1. Let's see what he get. Uh, 28 is what you want. But... And Yahshua entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Scan through, it should say something about like, like 13 days before the Passover or something like that. 
Should be a little bit after that, maybe like verse seven. Maybe. No? And when they saw it, they all remembered saying that was gonna be just a man. I can't be going crazy out here in the streets. Goodness oh, gracious. Out, you found it? Yeah. Oh. No, it ain't nothing in there? Oh, I think he wanted further down. And as they heard these things, they added into the parable because of Jerusalem, because they thought that the king of God should immediately appear. And when they had spoken, they had before us in Jerusalem, it came to pass when he was coming out of Bethany. Nothing? Mm. It ain't Luke. <sighs> All right, let me cheat again. I cheated wrong the first time. Let's see. Um, Matthew, we tried. Who I got, John? It ain't Mark either. Mm, I think it's John 12. Let me see. Let's see. John chapter 12. I didn't think it was John. Goodness gracious. That's how most I got catch you up. You know what I'm talking about? That's how it works. That's why the man say you gotta rely on what? Think you be knowing them. That's about it. I'm telling you, that's how I, I be looking at it. I be catching myself, I be looking at it, I be like, this is how these patterns be going off. They don't go back and check enough. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just gotta, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, all right, let's check. You mess around, that thing be, be all, in my mind, it was all confidence that they was in Matthew. I thought it was in Matthew. I mean, listen, I remember it. Like, I'm sitting here remembering it. I'm like, no, it's Matthew. I'm sitting here arguing. Right? Most I got look at you be like, nah. You know what I'm saying? That's how, that's how tricky the mind is. You can't, you can't just rely on that thing. That thing John. Right? John chapter what? Verse, uh... You start on 12, but... 12? No, I want the count, though. All right. All right. So, it, I think that's going to be verse 1. We want... You got to start at 1. So, it's John 12, verse 1. Is it John 12? Mm-hmm. Okay, John chapter 12, verse 1. Then y'all shoot was six days before the Passover. There so, six days before the Passover going to land you what? Came to Bethany. So, that would be the... You mad? Uh, eight. The eight. No, it's going to be the ninth. Fourteen days. Oh, you mean you're trying to be on the fifteenth. Yeah. Okay, all right. Nine days. The mm -hmm. ninth. The ninth. We'll put you on the ninth, right? All right. So keep going. The six days before the Passover came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Mm -hmm. Then took Mary a pound of ointment and spanked very costly, and appointed the feet of Yahshua and wiped her feet with her head. And the house was filled with the order of the ointment. Mm -hmm. Then said one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence? Yeah, it man, was man, Judas looking at it like, man, we could have made some money off that oil. You just pouring it on the floor on the man's feet. You know, I've heard some pastors say that, you know what I'm saying, how Yahshua trusted his disciples, how he was so nice mm -hmm. that he let the thief be in charge of the money because, you know what I'm saying, like, as a, like, nice thing to give everybody a chance. But now that I think about it, I was like, mm, he definitely set him up. Oh, that was a setup. He definitely, he knew what was going on. That was a setup. He definitely nothing. set him up. That, but, but you can do that when uh, you know God's character. Right. When you know a character is like, oh, that makes sense. I used to believe that, though. I used to be like, man, good old Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, it helped everybody out, and they just did him wrong. Yeah. Nah, man, look at the man set him up. Did he not sit across from the table from him? Right? Y'all remember sitting across from the table from him? He said, he said, listen, we all breaking bread, and one of y'all gonna betray me. Like, yeah. Everybody was sitting there, which one, Lord? They all asked him, it can't be me, which one, Lord? He told you to write off. It's gonna be you. He, then he told him, go do what you do. I think it was a setup. That's a setup. The man said, I know exactly how you're gonna die. I already know what you're gonna do. You're not doing nothing to me that I don't know about. Just do what you're gonna do. Go ahead and get it over with. And guess what Judas did? All right, he told me to do it. And that's how we look at it. All of us, we, we all in the middle of a setup. And it's just our choice to say, okay, you told me about it beforehand, right? You told me, dude, like, you have to understand. This is his character, right? He always tells us beforehand. This is what you, when we coming out of Egypt, 
Moses giving us a law. What did he tell us? I already know. As soon as I'm gone, y'all going to betray, go against the law. All these laws I just got done telling, I already know. As soon as I die, y'all going to go on your own way. Y'all going to start backing up, acting a fool. And the most I die, going to have to bring all these curses. God already showed that to him. God was like, don't worry about it. They're going to mess up. Oh, no, they're doing real good right now. Why are you talking to them? So you, why are you standing there? They're doing real good. It's impressive. It's good. But don't worry about it. As soon as you die, they're going to act a fool. It's going to happen. We black. That was the most I got. You got a whole bunch of just black folk just, just sitting here on top of a darn mountain. What do you think they gonna darn do? You know they gonna darn wild out. Moses went away for 40, 40 days. days. A month and a half the man, not even a month and a half the man is away. And we got to darn partying. We made two golden calves said, this is our God. All this stuff. This, listen, most I got looking like Pardon the phrase, I know a darn Negro when I see one. That's what he's looking at. Like, goodness, great. Most I got a little, I get rid of all they bust. He already know. So it's a setup. That's what he's trying to do for us. He's he trying to let us know we in the middle of a setup. And it's our choice to look at it and be like, I know the game plan. You told me how it worked. You told me what's going to happen next. I can obey. I can trust you and obey. Or I can just fall into the setup that you've already told me about. Our choice, right? Keep going. Watch this. This he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and mm -hmm. had the bag. Talking about Judas, right? Judas didn't care nothing about selling up the ointment just so he can make some more money and give it to the poor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All he wanted to do is he wanted to make some more money. He is a thief. He's going to be stealing from it, right? Remember, that's the reason why he betrayed him. How much he get paid? 30 pieces of silver. He got paid 30 pieces of silver to betray the man, right? It wasn't like, no, it wasn't just like, no, oh, I hate Yahushua. He was trying to make a deal. There's another thing that people don't understand. Well, Judas was trying to make a deal. I hang out with you every day, right? You, Jesus. I hang out with you every day. You don't do no wrong. I see that for myself, right? You always doing the right thing. I know for a fact nobody got any dirt on you. I know it. I'm with you every day. I've never seen you cuss, never seen you lie. You don't take nothing from nobody. All your butt be doing is chilling, minding your business, and doing the right thing every single time. So then if the police come to me and they say, listen, if you tell us where he is, we're going to take him to jail and we're going to put him on trial for everything that we believe that he did wrong. All the stuff y'all accusing him on, I'm right here. I was right next to him. It didn't happen. And we got plenty of witnesses to say it didn't happen. But if you tell us where he is, young man, we'll give you 30 pieces of silver right now. Easy money. All right? If you want to waste your money, go ahead and give it to me. Put him on trial if you want to. You're going to waste the 30 pieces of silver. You're going to waste the money that it costs to put him on trial. And then the man going to be walking out free and y'all going to be looking stupid because he's sharp with his mouth. So as soon as you let him speak, he going to light y'all butts up. This is what Judah's thinking. Right? Judah looking like this is a win-win for me. My man not going to go to jail and I'm going to get a free 30 pieces. Yeah, give it to you. I'll tell you exactly what the man did. The one I walk up to and give him a kiss on his cheek, that's him. And that's exactly what happened. Judah went out, kissed him on his cheek, and they was like, ah, y'all was sure. Boom, got him. Remember, they ain't got no Facebook post. They ain't got no wanted posters and nothing. They don't know what he looked like. All they did, they just heard about the man. If somebody calls him ruckus out here, all these people believe he's the Messiah and all this stuff. Okay, cool. I'll show you who he is. This one. That's when they condemned him to death. That's why Judas was like, oh man. Yeah, when they when they, when they said, when they said, Y'all sure you gotta die, Judas was looking like, what in the world just happened? <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't supposed to happen. He was looking like, my man is innocent. Y'all wouldn't, how y'all condemn him to death? And he killed himself afterwards. A lot of people don't understand that. Like what he did, he just tried to make a double up play. Get the 30 pieces of silver. You're going to be set free. We go back to doing our regular thing. They put the man to death. He felt bad about it. He said, innocent blood is on my hands now. And he ended up killing himself. He committed suicide because of it. Right? Because it didn't go the way that he planned it. But that's the setup. You think you got this figured out? I'm trying to tell you, relax. Just hang out. Relax. Do what you're supposed to do. Right? Keep going. Then said Yahushua, let her alone. Against this day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you not have always. You do not have always. Okay. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Yahushua's sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed in Yah on Yahushua. Mm-hmm. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast 
when they heard that Yahshua was coming to Jerusalem. To on what day? The next day, which right? is the 10th. So now we're on the 10th. Watch this. Took the branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and mm -hmm. cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. Blesses who? The king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. And Yahshua, when he had found a young donkey, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king comes sitting on a donkey's coat. These so, things understood not his disciples at first, but when Yahshua was glorified, then they remembered that, though, that these things were written of him, that they had done these things unto him. This is where they chose the lamb. Right? So just like what we read in the Exodus, on the 10th day, we choose our lamb. On this day in Jerusalem, the people, just for no reason, he's just walking up. People just lay out branches and say, Hosanna, blesses he who came, comes in the name of the Lord. This is the king of Israel. To be the king of Israel means that you have to be what? Every king of Israel was what? Anointed. Anointed. Right. Another word for anointed is what? Chosen. Yeah. Chosen? Uh, to cover. Cover? Well, yeah, What's another mean, word for it? Anointed means Christ, Christ maybe? Messiah. Yeah. Right? Messiah. That's right. Right? Another word for anointed is Messiah. That's what when people say I'm anointed and this, that, and the other, what that's the same word that you get Messiah and Christ from. Christ just means anointed, right? Messiah just means anointed, just different languages. So every king of Israel got anointed. So by calling him the king, they're calling him the Messiah. Right? This is the king of Israel. This is the Messiah. That means that they chose the lamb. Because if you got to be the Messiah, prophecy for Daniel tells us what? What has to happen to the Messiah? He, be cut off. he has to be cut off. And for what? For who sins? Not for himself. That means he. if you being cut off, if you get punished for somebody else, that makes you a what? What? Okay, I commit a sin, but I'm going to kill an animal. What is that animal name? Sacrifice. That's a sacrifice. The animal didn't do nothing. I committed the sin. But guess what the animal get? Death. Same thing with the Messiah. If I'm getting cut off, if I'm dying, right, because of your sin, I'm a sacrifice. So then it takes us all the way back to Exodus chapter 12. We go back to Exodus chapter 12. We choose our lamb. And that lamb was to be sacrificed. That happens on the 10th day. We just read six days before the Passover. Six days before the Passover, it puts you on the ninth, right? Remember, the Passover starts at the end of the 14th day. So that brings you to the 15th day, right? So six days before the Passover, it puts you on the ninth, all right? Then the next day, it's going to put you on the 10th. And that's when they chose a lamb, just like the law said in Exodus. On the 10th day, you choose your lamb for the Passover. So let's go back and get it. It's Exodus chapter 12, what verse? Uh, we are on verse 3. Okay. And also, Zechariah the prophet prophesied that this would happen, that he would be riding on the donkey's coat. All right, he'd be riding on top of a donkey. Coming in. So we got our three witnesses. All these things are laid out like, uh, what they call it when, oh, you know what they call it? Easter eggs. You know what I'm mean? saying? You know how they call it? You know what I'm saying? You know how they lay, they lay, they hidden in Easter eggs. What they all, they laid out like Easter eggs, right? <laughs> all throughout the book, right? They laid out just hidden in there. And all you got to do is keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, keep studying, keep paying attention, keep What's most important? Obey. 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 <laughs> Books say very clearly, if you obey, the ones that do his will will know if the doctrine if I teach is from God or not. Right? The only way to really know the book is you got to obey. It don't make sense. You don't obey, you can just forget it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to understand nothing. Right? You start obeying, it lines up. It starts to click. Right? Watch this. Keep going. Uh, we're on verse 4. This is uh, Exodus chapter 12, verse 4. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Mm -hmm. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Mm -hmm. You shall take it out from the sheep mm -hmm. or from the goats. Mm -hmm. And you shall keep it up unto the 14th day of the same month. Uh -huh. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Right, so that's what happened with Yahushua. We don't have to get it, but with Yahushua, he went up on the cross. And what happened? When he was on that cross. It got dark. It got dark for no reason. What time of day did it get dark? Noon. It was noon. And all of a sudden it got dark. And it stayed dark for how long? 
Three hours, right? Three hours it stayed dark, right? So at noon, it stayed dark for three hours. That's going to put you where? Uh, three o'clock. Three o'clock. And after that, what happened to him? He died. They poked him in the side. The man died. But the man died, and they poked him in the side to make sure he's dead. Then they ain't going to go back and break his leg. And they're like, no, 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 don't break the man's legs. Just let him on down. He already did. I can search the web for that. Just tap the search chip below. <laughs> I don't know what in the world going on, right? So he died at even, not because it was really even, but because the Most High God made it dark just to just to just to fulfill the prophecy, mm -hmm. right? Because he had to die at even. It was like that's oh, too early. See everything. He lose, he losing his life a little bit. All right, make it dark. Hurry up, right? Whole thing just got dark. Just that God say so. Everything has to happen exactly how the law and the prophet said. Mm -hmm. So even though it was noon, the fact that Exodus is telling us. You gotta kill the lamb at even. That's why when the Messiah was on the cross, the Most High made it dark, about like about the time he was dying. Like everything has to happen exactly how it's written in the Old Testament. So that's why a lot of people don't understand the New because they've never read the Old. Mm -hmm. But the New, it has to play out exactly how the Old said it would. And it connects, right? And that's important for us to know because there's more feast days. So these feast days represented when he came the first time, and then he's prophesied to come back a second time for the last time, right? And the other feast days will correlate to that. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for, okay, these next days, how is it going to play out? What are these days telling us about how he's going to return? Right? And all that's in the book. Uh, so keep going. Let's see. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses where they shall eat it. All right. So we took the blood and we put it on our door posts, right? We put it on the side and on the top, right? And that was when we were in Egypt and he was passing over all the, out, of, out of all of Egypt and he was getting all the people out of there, killing all the, uh, their firstborn. He did that. He said, anybody who has his blood, well, he don't tell us, but anyone who has his blood on their door, he'll pass over. That's where Passover came from. Right? He'll be like, okay, skip that house. They got the blood. Right? That's what we're about to let the kids do in a little bit. Keep going. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Mm -hmm. Eat now of it raw, nor sought, eat not of it raw, nor sought at all with water, but mm -hmm. roasted with fire, his head with his legs and with his, and with the pertinence thereof. Mm -hmm. And you shall let nothing of it remain until morning, and that which remains of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. All right? So you couldn't have no leftover lamb. All right, you supposed to take a whole lamb, put it over fire, roast that whole thing up. Right, don't don't mess with it. The head, everything, just put it in there, whole lamb. Right, roast, roast it up. Then after that, you don't take nothing out of it. You know what I'm saying? You eat it, do what you got to do. After it's done, get rid of all, let it burn up all the uh, all the leftovers. Right, keep going. And thus you shall eat it with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and the staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. All right, so he Lord's said. Castle. The way you eat it, you eat it like you're ready to go, right? Have your staff in your hand, you eating your lamb. Have your staff in your hand, have your loins girded, your belt, your belt on, make sure everything ready. Shoes on, tight, tied, and everything. Because why would that? Why would that be necessary? They gotta get out of Egypt. Because I'm about to kill all they firstborn, and they gonna be ready for y'all to go. Don't wait. Don't be trying to talk. Don't be trying to meet with nobody. As soon as they say you can go, leave. Always remember that the Most High God, the most powerful being ever waited for the pharaoh to give us permission to leave right he kept tormenting the man until he finally said okay y'all can leave that's who god is he's a respecter of authority he like him knowing i'm the only true god and you serve all these other gods i'm still i still gave you this authority that you got and i'm gonna respect it you gonna be the reason that they said you gonna say go because for god that mean more right god could come around and just be like nah move over boom kill him and then just steal him out of there but if you do that, how did you get glory? Somebody just say, oh, that was an accident. Pharaoh just got hit by lightning. Nah, but if I make Pharaoh admit I'm doing this because of the most I got, oh, now that's a story we can tell. Right? So that's how God always where You'll see any time that we was held captive in a country, we always got let go when the king of that country said let go. So there'll be some people telling us now, oh, they finally find out we Hebrews and they tell us to catch a plane and go to Africa. All right, steal from your auntie and your uncle, get whatever money you can raise to tell them you're going to pay them back, but don't, don't do it. That's literally what they're telling people, right? Then they go out there and go to Africa and just get stuck, find out they got the same curses over there that we got over here. Killing time. When it's time to go, most of our guy going to make Trump stand up and say, you know what, uh, 
You know, black folk go ahead and uh, that ain't gonna hurt more too, cause it's gonna be black people treating y'all like that. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and uh, go ahead and pay for the ticket. Let him get up out of here. He got he got to pay for my whole ticket too. See, don't get don't see, give me no uh, coupon like fifty percent off. See, I want the whole uh, ticket. You see how they was like uh, cash payments for reparations is unrealistic. Then that boy did two trillion dollars. Boom, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Real quick, <laughs> two <laughs> trillion dollars. Everybody get a stimulus check. And they about to do more. That day, they've been giving um like you know like Israel money for for years. Oh yeah, they get them billions. Oh, all the time. Like, they like, don't give them cash though. They just give them. It's money though. No matter how you look at it, money. But they give them. They give them money for uh for weapons. Yeah, that thing was like, help their defense. That thing was crazy. Oh, we don't got. We don't got that. We can't cash payments. No, they're two trillion dollars. Boom, like in a week. You know what I'm saying? Like, Easy money. Crazy. Easy money. And they about to do another batch. It's like it's almost like most of our guys was like, oh y'all got no money. All right, you know what I'm saying? Let me. Sprinkle a couple of coronavirus here, here. You know what I'm saying? They, oh. Who got money now? Right. <laughs> Two trillion dollars. Who like, got money crazy. now? Go ahead and send them the check. And I just want them to know, this don't count against my reparations either. No, I don't. This don't count. You know what I'm saying? When you give me my, get, I want the 12, I want it. Go ahead and give it to me. But then, you know what I'm saying? Don't calculate that against my reparations. Don't count everybody else getting it. Huh? Don't count everybody else getting it. Yeah, no, that thing. I just, I, I just deserve that. Thanks. Okay. Right? Okay. So then we look at it. Uh, we'll wrap up, but then Yahushua, he died, right? After he died as the lamb, all right, and gives us the blood that's necessary for him, to, for the most high God to pass over us and our sin, right? To forgive our sin and not kill us and take us like he would do, right? After that, the man resurrected in how many days? Three, three days, three nights, he's in the grave. So we look at that calculation, we ain't got to get it, but in Luke, we'll look at Luke, um, Luke chapter, I think, 24. He tells us in Luke that this day, is the day that he resurrected. And that day, it also tells us, was a Sunday. So if you count three days back, that means that puts him at Thursday. Thursday at around afternoon. Thursday afternoon, the man died. And then three days, three nights, he rose um, on... Uh, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. This day, they saw that he was uh, risen, right? Um, so that day, he rose in that early morning on Sunday, right? So that gives us the first fruit sheaf wave. Because he was the first harvest, right? We see him harvested, risen from the ground, right? That's why he had to be in the, in the uh, sepulcher, right? He comes out, he's risen from the ground. He's the first harvest, the first show to God, the first wave of offering to God to show that we want more of him. So the prophecy is that Yahushua told us is we will be, when we just read First John, it said that we want to be like him when we see him because we want more of him, right? So when we get resurrected, he makes us like him. We become the later harvest of the year, right? And that's how all of the days kind of line up. That's when we look at it. He was the first to die and raise with a new body, right? So when he raised Lazarus from the dead, some people argue that, but it's like Lazarus came back his same old self, like a regular person. He didn't come back like, you know, a direct creation from the Most High God. So. Yeah, it's going to be something different. And when we see it, we'll know it. You know what I'm saying? But right now, we have no idea. All right, but that's our hope. That's what we look into. So that's what we look into for Passover. That's what we're looking for for unleavened bread. Unleavened is is spiritual for taking taking the sin out of our lives, right? For, for seven days, we're looking at take all eleven, and this is just representative of us removing sin from our life, right? Um, and then you had a first fruit sheaf waving. From there, from the first fruit sheaf waving, we count into the next day. You do seven seven weeks, um, and then seven weeks plus a day, which is fifty days, and that's gonna put you at the feast of weeks. Um, the New Testament calls it Pentecost, right? Talk, talking about the 50th day. So that will be our next feast. It is also a harvesting feast. So all of our feasts are based around harvesting. Um, and so we'll talk about that one a little more when we get to it. We'll, we'll probably be probably be around there. Honestly, in, in seven weeks, we'll probably be around that part of the Bible anyway. So we might hit it on time. Any questions? All right, well, let's pray out. Let's get started.